What's the word, y'all? For the first time in the Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Klay Thompson era, the Warriors are now 0-2 in a playoff series, and it ain't looking good. Now, wise man once told me a playoff series does not start until the home team loses the game, so technically the Sacramento Kings have just been taking care of business, but even though that's the case, it's been hella impressive. I mean, the Warriors came into this series, even though they're the sixth seed, as the favorite to win it all, and I think a lot of that has to do with the reputation, because in this era, no team has really beat the Golden State Warriors in the series as long as those three players have been healthy. So with that, and with them coming off an NBA championship, they were given the benefit of the doubt. And guess what? Wiggins is back. Gary Payton is back. Oh, yeah, they're going to beat these, these boys that have close to no playoff experience. And through the first two games, I mean, I, I got to say I am extremely impressed with the Kings. The unfortunate part about game two is that all the conversation is going to be dominated with Draymond Green and some bonus conversations. Who was in the right? Did the refs make the right call by ejecting Draymond Green? Yada, yada, yada. And I'm not saying it should be talked about, but I think that's going to be taken away from the greatness that we've seen throughout these two games. Game one was this offensive explosion for both teams. And I think game two was more grinded out. You saw the, these coaches make some adjustments. So it's not a super high score game. Now, it ended up being 114, 106. But for these two teams, that's kind of a low score game. You know, the Sacramento Kings are the best offensive basketball. 114 is like, man, we got to get it together. They shot less than 30% from three and won a playoff game. That is something I did not expect from the Sacramento Kings at all. This game was the second worst three-point shooting game they've had all season long. And when it stakes at an all-time high, they still won. I love game twos in playoff series because you, you get to see coaches make adjustments based on game one. One of the adjustments we saw from the Warriors, of course, is bringing in Wiggins back into the starting lineup and putting them on De'Aaron Fox. Use that length and hopefully that could deter De'Aaron Fox from having another crazy performance. And it worked out kind of, you know, De'Aaron Fox had to work for all 24 of his points. So I, I would say that was a plus from Steve Kerr. The one thing that rubbed me the wrong way from Steve Kerr, though, is that at the end of the first quarter, he was doing the interview that they do in between quarters and he was asked about the turnovers. And at that point, the score was 23 to 17. So the Warriors had been putting the clamps on 17 points in a quarter from the Kings is awful especially considering how good they are on the offensive side of the ball right and he was asked about the turnovers and he said I, I, I don't think the turnovers are a problem right now and then for the remainder of the game this team has <laughs> turned the ball over a hundred different times now turnovers are something that have been consistent throughout this warrior uh this warrior run they got such a free-flowing offense and they're trying to make reads two steps ahead of their defenders and stuff and for the most part it works out but for him to just go out and say, ah, we, we good on that front. And then to see his team continuously turn the ball over was really funny. I think the worst part about all of this is that these two teams have given us banger after banger, two straight games where it's just been really good basketball. And the conversation is going to be geared around Draymond and Sabonis scuffle slash stomping, whatever, whatever. And you probably clicked this video thinking I was going to talk heavily about it. I'm just not. I just, I don't, I don't have the energy to get into the middle of the Warriors fans and the Kings fans argue, oh, he did it because he grabbed his leg. Well, well, the grabbing his leg doesn't warrant to getting stepped on. We ain't even step on step on him too too hard. Oh, he was acting. I just it's not it's not worth it. I went onto Twitter for 30 seconds right after Draymond got ejected, and that's all I saw. And I was like, that's that's enough for me. We not even gonna talk about it more than the 30 seconds you just gave me. The MVP of today, 100 percent has to be Davion Mitchell. I mean, boy, oh boy, his defense on Steph Curry in this one was was ridiculous. Uh, people keep talking about that one clip of J.R. Smith when he was an old man in the three, uh, talking about how Della Vadova gave it his all and it still did not matter. I'm seeing that right now in Davion Mitchell. Davion Mitchell came into the NBA with the nickname Off Night. And the reason he got that nickname is, hey, if he's guarding you, you're going to have an off night. And though his offense hasn't evolved the way you might have wanted it to evolve uh, since he was a lottery pick, I mean, he's still young in his NBA career, and he just guarded Steph Curry down the stretch and did, did a damn good job. I love that Mike Brown recognized that they needed him to hound Steph Curry or they needed somebody that was going to chase him full-time down the stretch. And even though Kevin, Her Kevin Herter, I keep doing that, by the way. Kevin Herter didn't have an amazing game. He had a better game in game two than one, but didn't play down the stretch because what Davion was doing on the defensive side of the ball was something that if, if they have a thing, like I know that the Cavs have the chain, if they get the junkyard dog chain, if they have anything like that, Davion Mitchell deserves a 1,000%. And then down the stretch, a guy that has not been a good three-point shooter in his NBA career had the confidence to take the biggest three of the game, and he knocked it down as a dagger. Davion Mitchell... 
is the is the MV, is the MVP kind of <laughs> that is kind of crazy because uh, even though it was tough for him out there a little bit, De'Aaron Fox still had a good game and Demont Sabonis bounced back heavily after game one, basically not doing anything. But like I'm, when I look at these star players, these all star players, both of these dudes might end up in All NBA for for God's sakes. These type of games are dope. But it's like when you're in the playoff scenario, you kind of need those other dudes to step up. At least that's the way I look at it, right? For example, Steph Curry gave you 28 today. You can kind of expect Steph Curry to have performances like this pretty regularly because he's Steph Curry, right? Now we need people like Jordan Poole to do literally anything of positive. Like, boy, he's been a tough watch through these two games. Let's be real. You need somebody else to alleviate that pressure because the stars are going to be the stars. I think that Wiggins was fine today. I mean, you could tell that he still don't have, have his legs completely, but I was, I'm, I've was i been actually impressed with a guy that's missed 20-plus games straight of the NBA season who's just thrown into the playoffs, and he's been at least decent. He ain't been the Wiggins that we saw in the last championship run last season, but he's been better than I expected him to. And then the rest, I, I, I ain't got nothing to say. Let me, let me Google... When was the last time Moses Moody got PT before tonight? Oh, yeah, he did play in that game a couple of days before the playoff. The last game in the season where the Warriors won by 50. Um, a game that I forgot kind of happened, and it happened like five days ago, I feel like. Uh, he played like 30 minutes then. But before that, I mean, his minutes is three minutes here, DMP here, and he was just thrown into the fire because Steve Kerr did, did not trust Jordan Poole down the stretch. Oopsie. He didn't like what he was seeing from Jonathan Kaminga, and I, I don't think he was wrong for throwing Moses Moody into the fire because they just needed some type of ump. According to the stat I'm looking at, teams that go up 2-0 in a playoff series, NBA playoff series, have won the series 92.8% of the time. That That is an absurd number. I mean, as of right now, the way it's going, the Kings just got to go into the chase center and steal one of the next two when it's practically over because it feels like the Warriors are the version of the Warriors we saw in the regular season, which is the ones that cannot win on the road. Both of these games, they're they're right there, y'all. The clutch player of the year steps up and makes a basket here and there, and then they get something. They, they get a Davion Mitchell three. They get a Harrison Barnes offensive rebound or a Sabonis putback or something that just just sucks the air out of the, the Warriors bench. And it low-key got me a little afraid that this might be the end of an era if this series ends here like if this series is if this is a one and done for them it might be in the end of an era because we know Draymond Green wants some money um I know he has an option and we'll see exactly what he decides to do with that option but with the stuff that happened preseason before the season started between him and Jordan Poole him wanting a lot of money Clay Thompson just came out said he's expecting a max extension I don't know what to expect but I do really enjoy watching the big the, their big three play together and I have enjoyed it um for for the entirety of it even the Kevin years I enjoyed it. I, I, was, I was rooting against them because I don't like to see super teams win, but I enjoyed the basketball that was played. I love the connection that Draymond Green has with Klay Thompson and Steph Curry. And I'm just a little bit afraid that we might be seeing the end of an era because we know it's going to have to happen eventually. I don't know, man. The city is bumping. They're up 2-0. We'll see what the rest holds. Ask me to talk about Philly versus Brooklyn. I ain't, I ain't got nothing to say, man. Jacques Vaughn is really trying to prevent Joel and B from give, getting off. But then you got the others, and the others have been stepping up. Tyrese Maxey specifically tonight. I uh, helped them close that game out. So that's it. Before we get out of here, I, I do want to say thank you all so much, man, for all of the support over the years have, have got us to this point where today we were on ESPN talking to Stephen A. Smith about hoops. Like, if I could go back in time and tell my 12-year-old self that one day you'll be on ESPN talking ball, like, I wouldn't believe myself. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, so we, we accomplished something, something huge and it still ain't really hit me. Right. Um, uh, but seeing all the support across the viewers of this channel, the new people seeing the appearance on ESPN and hitting me on follows and all of the messages I got from people a across the globe, really, um, really meant a lot to me. And I, I don't, I don't know if I can even really put it into words, how much y'all support has meant to me. And I, I, tr I've been, <laughs> I try to pay y'all back with the content, right? Trying to put together A-plus content, whether it be on this channel, that channel, that channel. Because that's like my way of saying thank you without literally saying thank you. But this is also me literally saying thank you. I also got to say thank you to Stephen A. Smith, man. Um, because he, he has been a real champ through all, all of this. You know, he invited me into his podcast. Um, we've had a, a great 45-minute conversation. And in that, he was okay 
with the criticisms that I've thrown him on his show. You know what I'm saying? Because part, part of the show is disagreeing with other people. You know, that's, that's what we do, right? Um, and he was okay with it. And that kind of in a lot. I, I've, I ain't going to say no names, but I've made videos like having a conversation with somebody, not in a literal sense, but like them being on TV. I disagree with their take and me having my own opinion about their take. And, and they didn't like it so much so that they blocked me on social media and things like that. And that could have went that route. But instead, Stephen A was like, I'm, I'm going to, he basically took me under his wing, y'all. Uh, which, again, is, is crazy to say aloud. Go to Stephen A. Smith's Twitter right now. He follows 17 people. Some of those people are Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, ESPN itself, First Take. And then it's little old me. You know how many people he's had on his show throughout the years? He follows 17 people. And I'm one of them. And again, none of this is really registering to me completely. But I wouldn't be able to do any of this if y'all weren't watching and y'all weren't showing love. Because I would just be a dude in my living room, in my work office, talking to a camera. I've given me a voice, and I, I'm trying my hardest to do right by y'all and do right by everybody by using this voice in, the, in the, the best way I can. So again, thank you.